All right, in this video, we're going to kick off our discussion on fluid power, um, and we will start it with pneumatic power. So over the course of this PowerPoint, we're going to talk about all of these different concepts. Um, we're going to start again with pneumatic. Um, we're going to talk about what pneumatics uh, versus hydraulics uh, means. Um, and then we're going to pretty much do most of our focus on the calculations that deal with Pascal's laws, the perfect gas laws um, that you probably talked about in chemistry class if you've been uh, through that, where we talk about Boyle's law, Charles' law, and Gay-Lussac's Gay law. Um, those will be the main points of emphasis. So pneumatics is the use of gas uh, flowing under pressure to transmit power from one location to another. Um, so uh, pneumatic systems use compressible gas. So if you think about like uh, an air compressor or something like that. Um, um, they p possess a quicker, jumpier motion, not as precise, um, and so forth. So here's some early pneumatic uses. We won't really go through that. Um, a subway um, could use no, uh, pneumatic power. Um, but this is where I want to focus most of our time. Um, gases are affected by three variables, and those variables are temperature, pressure, and volume. Um, we're going to talk about a concept called absolute pressure. So when you see gauge pressure, um, that does not include the atmospheric pressure. Um, so when you're looking at um, what the what the pressure says on the gauge, we're going to, for these calculations, have to um, also add in what is called atmospheric pressure. Okay, um, and that that is uh, how we get our absolute pressure. So atmospheric pressure plus the gauge pressure. Um, so here's an example. Um, a standard atmospheric pressure equals 14.7 um, pound uh, psi, so pounds per square inch psi. Um, if the if the gauge reads 120 psi, the absolute pressure would be 134.7. So we want to take that what the gauge is saying, 120 psi, plus the 14.7 atmospheric pressure. Um, and that would give us a total absolute pressure of 134.7. So make sure that you know that for atmospheric pressure, um, you, uh, you need to add in that 14.7 to get that absolute pressure for your calculations. Um, also, we're looking at absolute temperature. So um, absolute temperature is measured in degrees Rankine. Okay, so that's going to be... Um, not Fahrenheit, not Celsius, it's a different temperature scale. And Rankine is simply the, uh, the Fahrenheit temperature plus 460. Okay, so if the temperature of the air in a system is 65 degrees Fahrenheit, the absolute temperature would be 525 degrees Rankine. So we want to take the 65 degrees Fahrenheit, add 460 to it, and that gives us the absolute temperature. So in order to do these calculations, we are going to need to know absolute pressure, absolute temperature, um, and that will then allow us to um, calculate some things. So Pascal's law deals with these ideas. Pascal's law is that pressure is force divided by area. Um, and here are some units that we will use typically for these different uh, variables, but um, your pressure is PSI, force is in pounds, and area is in square inches. So um, here's an example. How much pressure can be produced with a 3-inch diameter cylinder and 60 pounds of force? Um, so if the diameter is 3, the radius, since this is a cylinder, we're going to deal with the formula being pi r squared. Uh, the radius is 1.5. So the area is 7.07 .07 square inches. The force is 60 pounds. So we take the 60 pounds and divide by the 7.07 .07 square inches. And that gives us a pressure of 8.49 PSI. Okay, so that's just Pascal's law. P equals force divided by area. So the perfect gas laws, um, again, there are three of them. 
and essentially each one takes two of the um, uh, concepts that, that determine um, the pneumatics, volume, pressure, and temperature. Um, Boyle's Law talks about volume and um, pressure. So it says the volume of a gas at constant temperature varies inversely with the pressure exerted on it. So as you can see, that is, as the pressure increases, the volume will decrease. And here is the, um, the formula that we'll use, and it's simply P1V1 equals P2V2. So what that means is the pressure of the initial system times the volume of the gas in the initial system is going to equal the resulting pressure times volume. Okay, so here's an example. A cylinder is filled with 40 cubic inches of air at a pressure of 60 psi. The cylinder is compressed at 10 psi. I'm sorry, 10 uh, cubic inches. What is the resulting absolute pressure? Okay, so this is kind of what's going on here. So our initial pressure is 60 psi. We do not know the final pressure. Uh, we've got the initial volume and the final volume. The first thing we need to do is uh, always convert our pressure to absolute pressure. And the same would be true with temperature as we see, as we're going to see later on. So the initial temperature, or sorry, the initial pressure was actually 74.7 PSI. We want to make sure we add in that 14.7. And then we're just going to use our formula here. Um, so the initial, uh, the P1 is 74.7, the V1 is 40. And we're going to set that equal to P2 times 10. And then we simply just solve for P2, which gives us, look, I, I'm not uh, concerned about scientific notation or significant figures or anything like that. So just do the 74.7 times 40 divided by 10 uh, and give me that answer. That will be our final, um, final pressure of the system, absolute pressure. All right, Charles's Law deals with temperature and volume and this just says as the temperature increases the volume will also increase um, and here is our formula for that that v1 divided by t1 will equal v2 divided by t2 and again for our temperatures we need to make sure that we're dealing with absolute temperature an expandable container is filled with 28 cubic inches of air that is sitting in ice that is 32 degrees fahrenheit the container is removed from the icy water and heated to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. What is the resulting volume? Okay, so our initial volume is 28. Our initial temperature is 32. The final temperature 200. And what is the final volume? Convert your temperatures to Rankine. So we just add 460 to each of those. And then we would do the 28 divided by the 492 and set that equal to V2 divided by 660 and uh, cross multiply there and solve for V2 and we get 38. So we see that the volume increases as the temperature also increased. All right, and the last law is Gay-Lussac's Gay law, um, which deals with pressure and temperature. P1 over T1 is equal to P2 over V2. Note for both of these, we have to get absolute temperature. We have to get absolute pressure. Okay. So um, here's an example of this. We've got a um, 300 uh, cubic inch sealed air tank. In the morning, the temperature inside the tank is 62 degrees Fahrenheit, and the pressure reads 120. Uh, by afternoon, the temperature inside the tank is expected to be close to 90 what will the absolute pressure be at that point? So we should see that increase as well. Um, so we're going to have to convert our pressure, our initial pressure, the gauge said 120, add, add in the abs, uh, atmospheric pressure, so that's going to give us 134.7. Also, we're going to convert our temperatures to absolute temperature by adding 460 to get those in degrees Rankine instead of Fahrenheit. And then we'll simply just use our formula so we're going to take 134.7 and divide by our initial temperature of 522 and set that equal to P2 divided by 550. And again, if you just cross multiply and solve, we get a final pressure.
pressure of 140 pounds, 140 psi. Now, um, quick side note: this is the final absolute pressure. But if if the question were, what is the final um, pressure at the gauge? Um, at that point, you would want to subtract um, the atmospheric pressure from that to get the final gauge reading. So the initial gauge reading was 120, but then we had to add in the 14.7. Um, if we if we now subtracted the 14.7 from this, we would have the final gauge reading um, of, of that uh, pressure. Okay. Um, which is exactly what this says. Okay, so it says, uh, you know, here was your final absolute pressure. Subtract the atmospheric pressure. Now your final gauge pressure is 127. Okay, I'm going to stop there. I'm not going to go through the, the pneumatic system components. I don't think that that's an important task for us. Um, I just want to make sure that you are familiar with the gas laws and with Pascal's law. Um, so you're going to have to do some uh, questions on those formulas. And there will also be some questions dealing with hydraulics, which I will do in a separate video.